Welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, it's a great crowd and we're very happy to see you all here. Uh, we're here today to celebrate the completion of Marin County's largest renewable energy project. We hope this project will serve as both a model and inspiration for more such projects in the near future. We're going to begin by hearing from several critical partners in this groundbreaking project. Um, after my introductory comments on behalf of San Rafael Airport, we'll hear from San Rafael Mayor Gary Phillips. Uh, from Marin Energy Authority, we have San Rafael City Councilman and Chairman Damon Connolly and Marin County Supervisor Kate Sears. Uh, and then we'll finish with Makini Hassan from the Marin City Community Development Corporation. Uh, after the speakers, we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, we'll go outside for a ceremonial ribbon cutting and pulling of the switch, um, and then we'll have some lunch. I really can't tell you how good it felt yesterday afternoon at 12.11 when I turned this system on. <laughs> uh, 700,000 watts of clean, renewable energy uh, poured into the grid yesterday afternoon when we turned it on. And, and that was... And that was a cloudy day. Today it's going to be more. This project is, is just such a great example of what, what we really need to do as a, a community and a, and a state and a country to clean up our environment and, and reduce and, and hopefully one day end our reliance on foreign oil and uh, other dirty carbon fuel sources. For me personally and for our uh, real estate family business, this, this project isn't just an investment, it represents much more than that. It's actually been both a catalyst and a tipping point in, in our efforts to achieve sustainability both within our personal lives and our family business. At 1.65 megawatt hours of annual electrical production, this project places our company and family carbon footprint way into the negative, and we're very proud of that. On an annual basis, this clean, renewable energy will offset 2.5 million pounds of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that's equivalent to planting 29,000 new trees or permanently removing 232 cars from our roads. I mentioned the word catalyst. As a re direct result of this project, I joined the Green Committee of the San Rafael Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I did it, I wanted to learn more about green business practices, and I also wanted to share my own existing experiences with, with solar and some other renewable initiatives I've worked on. Um, I subsequently attended the City of San Rafael's Greening for Profit business program, and I'm actually currently working with Dominican University's Green MBA program. They provide interns to help local businesses get green certification, and, and we expect to get green certification here for our operations at San Rafael Airport in December of this year. A little bit later, when we're done, uh, we'll be eating a local sustainable lunch uh, prepared to celebrate National Food Day, which is today. Um, National Food Day seeks to promote safer, healthier diets by supporting sustainable and organic farms. And today we have here uh, Bridget Moran and Ann uh, Huseman from the Marin Agricultural Institute. Hi. <laughs> uh, they've helped us plan the lunch today. Our, we're blessed in Marin County in the North Bay to have a lot of local farms, and that's in, in no small part to the Marin Ag Institute's efforts. They're basically the Marin Farmers Market. Um, also on the back table, we've got uh, a good selection of our own produce, uh, produced locally here at San Rafael Airport by um, my father-in-law's uncle, uh, Hassan Shek Shekufande. Before closing, I'd like to recognize and thank several people and organizations who won't be speaking today, but who are here in attendance and without whom this project couldn't have happened. Uh, first, Misty Norton. You're here somewhere, Misty, in the back row. Uh, KTBU asked me, you know, how do we get the idea for this project? And it, it really was Misty. Back in, I think, 2003, Misty approached me about doing a net metered project to power the airport. And she helped me build that then. And she's, she's stayed in touch and finally this project uh, today, one megawatts of power going to Marin Clean Energy is, is in large part her brainchild and baby. So thank you, Misty. 
Uh, thanks to Mike Cato and Cheryl Sinelli and, and Janet and Elizabeth from, from Bank of Marin for providing some critical constru construction financing for the project, along with really great customer service. One of the things that can really kill a renewable project like this before it can get off the ground is the cost and difficulty of connecting into PG&E's grid. And I really want to compliment PG&E. We've got a number of uh, their team members here today that worked on a really great collaborative basis with us and Marin Clean Energy to connect into the grid in a, in a timely and cost-effective manner. Um, in particular, Gerald Cabrera and uh, the local Santa Fe construction team led by Pat Hayes and Tosin Ladiende. And finally, I'd like to recognize uh, my, my partners and, and bosses and co-investors in this project, uh, Joe and Heidi Shaku, uh, and their son Sina, and my wife Sally Shaku. Uh, the, as you can imagine, the details and risks of a $3 million project like this were subject of a lot of dinner conversations amongst the family, and uh, I really appreciate the faith you all placed in me. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Gary. Well, I'd like to start by welcoming everyone. This is a pretty exciting time, certainly for San Rafael. With over a, uh, a megawatt of energy, it goes up and goes down, but let's say over uh, a megawatt that will be plugged into uh, MCE, and so we're really excited about that. In uh, 2009, the city of San Rafael adopted the uh, Climate Change Action Plan, and certainly uh, this is uh, in instrumental and in, in certainly uh, uh, involved in the Climate Change Action Plan. We committed to reducing greenhouse gases by 25% uh, to, by 2020, and this is certainly a step in that, right, in that direction. The city is doing uh, more than uh, just this project, and we can do a fair amount, and we're looking currently at at solar panels on our facilities, including the garage uh, uh, structures that we have. But the, the city only uh, creates about one to two percent of the greenhouse gases, and so we're limited as to what we can do, and therefore it's gonna require a project such as this, and certainly uh, from our, our residents, all contributing to uh, the reduction of greenhouse, greenhouse gases. The, uh, Certainly the, the, uh, the airport as a commercial enterprise is, is stepping up and we hope that uh, through the Chamber of Commerce and other entities uh, we'll see more and more involvement by, by our commercial uh, entities within San Rafael. About 21% of uh, greenhouse gases are created by commercials and so you can see that this is certainly uh, an important step in our, our strategy to reduce greenhouse, greenhouse gases. This is a perfect example because not only uh, is San Rafael Airport going to re, uh, rely on the energy that they produce, but they're also going to be selling back to, uh, as I'm sure that Damon will mention, uh, sell back to the uh, MCE uh, power that they're generating beyond their, their needs, and what a, what a great model that, that is. So we certainly applaud the airport, uh, Bob Herbst uh, and his leadership, uh, Joe Sheku as well, and uh, all of those that are involved in this project to bring it to uh, to light and we'll look forward to throwing the switch in a little bit. And I would suggest there's one more reason we should all be proud of residing in, in San Rafael. It's a great place and this is one more example. So I, I thank you all for joining us this, this morning and look forward to the rest of the, uh, the day. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Damon Connolly and I'm joined by uh, Kate Sears. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I actually get to wear two hats, uh, both as a San Rafael City Council member and also as the chair of the uh, Marin Clean Energy Program. And actually in both capacities, I'd, I'd really like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Bob Herbst and his team, uh, the Shaku family, uh, for really sharing uh, the vision that brings us here of increasing our supply of local renewable energy. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, real briefly, about some programmatic and community benefits and then turn it over to Kate uh, to talk about the economic benefits to our local communities uh, that will flow from this. Bob was absolutely correct when he said this is a groundbreaking effort. 
Uh, not only is it the biggest uh, local renewable project in history in Marin County, it's actually the first uh, program in uh, what we're calling our feed-in tariff program uh, for Marin Clean Energy. What that is, is if you have a local project of one megawatt or less, uh, Marin Clean Energy is offering a fixed price that if you can meet, uh, you bid your energy into that program, and that's exactly what's happened here. We're hoping that with this model, there'll be even more interest in creating uh, such other local renewable projects. In fact, we're so confident that right now, uh, the subscription cap on the program is two megawatts. Uh, we're proud to announce that, uh, and we'll be announcing publicly shortly, that we're increasing that overall cap uh, to, to, to 10 megawatts. So again, we hope this is the first of many. Uh, additional FIT projects, feed and tariff projects, look especially promising because, uh, as many of you may know, Richmond has actually just decided to join Marin Clean Energy, and they're coming online uh, next year. Uh, what we're also finding is a bunch of interest in other areas. Just this morning, I was talking to a, a group of business people in Sonoma County. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in Humboldt uh, County talking up the program. Come to think of it, I'm putting too much mileage on my car these days, but um, otherwise, all is good on that. Um, we're also planning to develop, uh, with hopefully the San Rafael Airport initially, uh, what we're calling a community solar cooperative program, where community members who are interested in greening up their power supply can actually subscribe to this source of energy uh, and, and thus participate uh, as a group or cooperative, if you will, in, in these kind of projects. So I know Bob and his team are very interested uh, in launching that with us. Well, that program uh, we're hoping to launch in 2013. Uh, details are still being vetted. It would be completely voluntary. And again, we're hoping that both Marin and Richmond customers uh, would participate in that. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Supervisor Kate Sears, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, some local economic benefits. Uh, well, as a county supervisor and the vice chair of MEA, I have to tell you it's hard to be more enthused about this project than I am. And I, I really think that our key word for today is catalyst, as Bob Herbst mentioned. This project was a catalyst for really a fantastic public-private partnership between MEA and the airport. And, and really, we can't thank Bob Herbst, Joe Shaku, uh, and other family members enough for the, this opportunity to partner. <clears throat> it's also been a catalyst for business and employment opportunities here in the county. And there I really have to thank the contractor. When we were first here kind of launching the, this project, I turned to the contractor and I said, and I'm assuming that this is gonna be a great opportunity for local employment. And we were really privileged to have a contractor who was very open to that notion and had already been thinking in that direction. And this project created tremendous employment opportunities for members of our community. It's a boon to our local benefits. It was a boon to our local individuals who already had skills installing solar, solar panels but were looking for additional work opportunities. Makini Hassan in a moment will tell us a little bit more about those details. But this project has been a launch pad for individuals in our community who got additional job training here and are taking those skills out into our community. And I think this is exactly the kind of model for public-private partnerships, for creating job opportunities for our residents that we need to look to throughout our county because it really benefits all of us. It's also a catalyst for residents here who are supportive of clean energy to, to own a share uh, of this solar project going forward. And it's a catalyst to combine our healthy food, our clean energy, and really combine all of the values that those of us here share. So it's a fabulous project and I'm really excited about this and thank all of you so much here, Bob and Joe in particular, and everyone who is supportive of this project. I can hardly wait to see you pull that pull that switch. I hear it's a little heavy, so we may have to help him. <laughs> and thank you all for being here. So, McKinney, do you want to come up and say a few words? 
or whoever wants to speak about the project, you do because you made it all happen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. My name is Colleen Curry, and I am the owner and co-founder of Synapse Electric with Paul Bruner. We were the contractor that installed the system, and we were really pleased to be part of this local business collaboration to complete the solar installation at the airport. We want to thank Bob Herbst, the Sheku family, Marin Clean Energy, our employees, Mar uh, Marin City CDC for supplying additional employees. We, we took on 20 additional uh, labor for this job as well as four full-time employees and we will be picking up an additional employee from Marin City CDC starting next week. F and we want to thank them all for their commitment to provide local renewable energy to Marin residents. In our commitment to sustainable building, renewable energy and local hiring, together we accomplished a complex project in a very short amount of time. Later on, if you join us for the tour, Paul Bruner can give you an idea of how many panels were involved and the complexity with the number of roofs. Again, we are very pleased to have been part of this effort to make Marin cleaner and greener. And I'd like to introduce you to Makini Lasan, the Executive Director of Marin City Community Development. Uh, we uh, would like to start out by uh, providing congratulations to the Marin Clean Energy, Synapse Electric, and so many others for this tremendous pro successful project. Uh, as a workforce intermediary, we seek opportunities that provide services to businesses for, uh, for the creation of jobs and career opportunities. We're very grateful, starting out, to Supervisor Kate Sears for suggesting that, for, for suggesting that the company uh, consider local hires and recommending us. Uh, we're pleased, very pleased, to have been part of this effort by providing local staffing support, including those who receive training and work experience through our agency, including residents of Marin City. Uh, we were also very pleased to find that we have one of the participants being brought on by Synapse as a regular hire, and others are going to be participating in other projects, and we just had the chance to meet uh, uh, representative from SolarCraft who indicated he needs some more employees and a partner of ours needs some more employees. So we can see the economic impact and the job creation impact and the continued employment of local residents through projects like these, which we're so pleased and excited to be a part of. Uh, again, I just want to say thank you uh, for the opportunity to be part of this and again, congratulations. So with that, I'd like to invite the speakers uh, up to the front to take uh, Q&A, uh, and uh, we'd like to take questions from the press first, and then any questions from the general audience. So come on up, guys. <laughs> come on, McKinney, you too. <laughs> yes. For, for other businesses in Marin, or even North Bay, what lessons are to be learned in terms of taking on a project like this, uh, in terms of planning, financing, working through sort of regulatory issues, working through environmental issues, um, because there's, I'm sure there's, you know, a, a few lessons and, and a few of the arrows in your back, Bob, that you've learned from. Uh, but also, I'd, I'd, I'd love to open it up to the, to the group. What, what are the, you know, three to five major lessons as a business owner uh, who wants to tap uh, the, the feed-in tariff programs? What lessons to be learned? How do you sort of raise the, the, uh, uh, the possibilities for success like, like this one? Well, site selection, I think, is critical. Uh, if you can do rooftop, you're way ahead of the game. Uh, we may have all seen the article in uh, IJ this morning about the Novato project. They're trying to do a ground-based system, and, and they're having opposition. Um, rooftop projects are protected by state law. Uh, neighbors and opponents can't say, well, we don't like the look of it, we're worried that it's going to impact something. There's really no planning level review for a rooftop project, um, so that's important. Secondly, uh, a very early step is to get in touch with PG&E's interconnection services. Uh, Gerald Cabrera uh, is our rep in this area. To find out if you can make a connection. You know, I mentioned 
a lot of projects die because of the inability to make a connection at a, a, a cost point that makes economic sense for the project. If you're far from PG&E's uh, transmission lines, that's probably not going to be a winner. And PG&E has online tools for you to go check your location and, and see what their grid capabilities are. Um, so those are, those are two you know, aspects related to site selection. Finally, if you can find a local you know, finance partner like we were able to do with Bank of Marin, I mean, that's huge. Um, otherwise, it's all money out of your pocket. This is still a you know, 12 or 13 year payback project before the investment's paid off. So it's, you've, you've got to have uh, <laughs> some partners on the financial side to, to make that happen for most businesses, because it's a big chunk. And then finally, avail yourself of the whatever federal and state incentive programs there are. In, in our case, there's currently a 30% federal tax credit program um, that we qualified for. And those jump around, but our, you know, our renewable energy professionals in the audience today, like Misty, um, they can give you a sense of that. Uh, so then I'll, I'll turn it over to... Uh, let me make a plug for another option on rooftop as well. I, I mentioned the feed-in tariff program earlier. We also have what's called net energy metering, and some of you may already be familiar with this. If you overbuild solar on your roof right now and you're a PG&E customer, um, you can zero out your bill at the end of the year and get credit for the overproduction. Uh, we feel we actually offer a, a, a competitive project a product that outdoes that. If you overproduce on your roof and you're a Marine Clean Energy customer, we will actually buy the excess power from you at retail price. So what we're seeing is it really provides another incentive for people to uh, go with the rooftop solar, particularly commercial enterprises. I'll just say that I was, I was pleased that Bob didn't uh, talk about being harassed too much by, uh, by planning. Sometimes that comes up. But uh, our city staff's quite excellent, I must say, but you know how it is. Uh, with regard to the city, I mentioned earlier, we have a pretty high lofty goal of 25% by 2020 uh, to meet our climate change action plan uh, goals. And uh, so we are going to be motivated to make certain that the permits move along and we're cooperative and helpful in, in the I feel comfortable in saying that we're going to help you in any way that we can as a city with regard to the permits, et cetera, to, to help this so that it doesn't become a barrier. And again, I'm, I'm pleased that Bob didn't talk about barriers that, uh, that involve the city. At, at the uh, groundbreaking, I talked quite a bit about the city of San Rafael and especially the building permit process. Uh, I'd like to reiterate, re reiterate a few of those comments. So this whole project, our total building permit fees and planning fees, I think were $1,600 for a $3 million project. A comparable commercial project, they'd probably be $30,000 or $40,000. So that's a commitment on the part of the city and their climate change action plan to foster and encourage projects like this. And then I think the permit got issued in six weeks. So again, a pretty complicated project. So they, they really went out of their way and, and we want to thank the building department. I don't know if Brian's here today. Brian Sheridan, are you here today? Guess not, couldn't get up. But uh, anyway, thank you. Uh, Jack. Could you tell us um, how many homes this system is uh, capable of serving? So on an on a instant basis, up to 1,200 homes. Uh, I think the total power use uh, for a whole year, uh, maybe uh, Jamie can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's in the neighborhood of four or 500 Marin County homes, uh, all of their power use for the, for the whole year. But at any given moment on a summer day, up to 1,200 homes. Yeah, so we really uh, broke our ground uh, right around July 1st. Uh, so what is that, four months, July, August, September, October? Yeah, less than four months from groundbreaking to completion. So Synapse Electric, thank you very much, Paul and Colleen, wherever Paul's hiding. Right here next to me, and Colleen. Uh, number of panels, uh, you know, Paul, why don't you speak to that? 
Right, so um, also after the uh, turning the switch on, we're going to have a short 15 minute uh, tour and I can give you some more detail. But in general, the solar was installed on 48 roofs. There's a total of 4,592 panels. I know them all because we handle them. And so, in quite a bit of complex racking. So, this is quite an accomplishment if you, even if you look across the roofs. But uh, please join us afterwards and I'll take you on a grand tour and we can get into the nuts and bolts of it. Thank you. Yes? I have a question about the Marine City Community Service District. Um, and I understand that you're able to um, uh, provide a higher salary for your participants while delivering um, a lower price to um, who's hiring your people. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that, because <coughs> it's an important piece to the whole economic. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we're, we're actually the Marin City Community Development Corporation. And folks often get us, you know, two good organizations, it's, it happens all the time. Uh, being a workforce intermediary, we have a dual customer approach. That is the business customer, the more we can support businesses, the better opportunities that they are for job seekers. But we also provide intensive support to job seekers and we're actually what's called a section three concern, which is uh, by HUD standards, we work to ensure their local hires getting prevailing wages. So even as a staffing agency, we reduce our margin significantly to ensure that we get the highest salaries for those that are working on projects. And then we try to supplement that with other kinds of um, fundraising. So we're not the traditional staffing agency that makes their, you know, a good sized margin on workers. We believe that it's important for them to have as much support, the best salaries, and the best opportunities. And then as a 5013C, we look at ways in which to augment, you know, the difference in, you know, what the costs actually are for our agency. And so we were able to, to do that. I want to also mention that we're, uh, I want to recognize the uh, Marin Workforce Investment Board that we're a part of. And that board widens our reach and is also actively engaged in working with organizations to support you know, businesses as well as job seekers. And so being part of that board and working very closely with Marin uh, Employment Connection, we're able to access a number of Marin residents with these opportunities also. to the opportunity for additional projects of this kind and other uh, net energy metering projects, et cetera. Are we looking at a growth in the need for skilled installers and um, companies that will be able to spec, specify systems, et cetera? And can we project any kind of a longer term employment outlook in the uh, renewable energy field in Marin? So Paul, that, that's probably a, a question for you or Misty maybe, if you'd like to come up and address that. Um, to answer your question regarding, as I understand it, it long-term employment for, for, for them, um, it's difficult in, you know, right now there's a lot of projects that are happening, so it's easy to bring on new new staff and have them employed, but, um, and we hope to maintain the, those uh, employees for the longer term. However, it's only going to be as long as the projects keep coming in. So the, the more open different cities and communities are to having these projects um, continue, then we have, we have the work for those employees. So I don't know if that answered your question. I can, I can add one thing to that. Uh, Damon mentioned that Marine Clean Energy is increasing the cap on their feed-in tariff program from 2 megawatts to 10 megawatts. That's, that's huge. That's 10 projects like this. Um, for example, many of you know about the community sports center that, that we have proposed here at the Santa Fe Airport. And that rooftop is going to be big enough for about a 750 kilowatt solar project, of which the sports users will only use uh, perhaps 200 kilowatts. So that, there's another half megawatt there that can go into the Marin Clean Energy Program. 
if you're a landowner or a, a local business, uh, like the gentleman up in Novato that we read about today that's looking to do a project, if two, two megawatt cap, you, there's, there's not much room left anymore because we're one megawatt of it right here, but a 10, they've really opened up the ceiling now, so that, that can foster some more projects and jobs. Yeah, I had a, a question regarding um, understanding the complexity of a project like this, and especially the financing piece. Uh, are there other incentives that uh, are either in coming down the pipeline or that you all would recommend to um, encourage the type of investment, um, financing investment needed for a project like this, whether it's at the city, state, county, federal levels? I've had some discussions with uh, County Supervisor Susan Adams, uh, we're on the Green Committee together, um, about trying to uh, foster and develop a PACE type program here in Marin County. So that's, that's basically a property tax assessment program whereby uh, you get a loan to build the project and the loan gets paid back on your annual property taxes. Um, that's a program that's worked up in Sonoma County, especially on a residential basis, to help people come up with the cash up front for the project. I, I think Susan's working with uh, Marin Clean Energy, so Don can touch on Yeah, so we are in the early stages of launching a commercial PACE program, which would allow for solar installations like this one uh, to be paid off on the property tax bill. And uh, we'll be taking some steps over the next couple of months. I believe the County of Marin and the City of Nevada are also interested in taking those steps with us. And uh, many of our other member cities, I expect, will be interested. Um, and then, and that will be an opportunity that will be available for commercial customers uh, within the coming, uh, within 2013, I expect. We're also in the process of launching an on-bill repayment program, which would be another way that folks could um, do either energy efficiency installations or solar installations on their property and then uh, pay them off on their electricity bill um, spread out over a five or ten year term um, with the goal being to keep their um, their rate at or below where it would have been initially, but they're um, able to pay off an upfront investment in a, a solar installation, for example. So um, keep an eye out for more information about our on-bill repayment program. We expect that to be launching on a pilot basis in 2013, and it'll be open to commercial and residential customers as well. The, the panels that we used on this project are, are manufactured by uh, a firm called REC. Uh, they have U.S. plants where they uh, make all of their silicone for their panels are up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, they actually have a little different process. They're, they have, they're one of the most efficient panels on the market. Um, they make their silicone in, silicone in, a, in a different process. It's a, a more time uh, and labor intensive process. But a, uh, a very important aspect of it is that silicone uses a ton of water to produce and a ton of electricity. And their process while longer, uh, uses, I, I believe, 10% of the, Misty, maybe you can correct me on that, 20% of, of the water and electricity compared to typical silicone panels. Um, so we're, we're looking for good things. Uh, the typical word on the street about REC panels is that they even outproduce their nameplate rating. Um, so I'm hoping to see it on the screen here uh, later today when we get it up and running. Uh, what, what additional challenges would there have been if the project were over a megawatt? Uh, not necessarily any. Um, they're, they're, we, we actually maxed out the number of our hangers that could take panels. We don't actually own all the hangers here. The pilots own about half the hangers, so we couldn't put panels in the pilot-owned hangers. So we pretty much maxed it out, and that brought us to 972 kilowatts of AC power, uh, DC about 1.12. Um, so there is uh, a distinction if you get, go over one megawatt within the balancing, the state balancing authority, Cal ISO, um, that you have some additional requirements, some more stringent metering requirements. So there is a step there that anyone who was considering a project would want to educate themselves about that. There's more cost involved if you're over a megawatt. That, again, that wasn't what drove our decision, but we happened to fall under it, and so we didn't need to deal with those extra sort of hurdles within the, the power grid uh, around the state. 
Um, in terms of you know, in encouraging more projects like this, again, MCA raising the cap is huge. Um, having local financing sources like Bank of Marin um, is huge. Um, having the assistance from our local cities and their planning and building departments and helping to streamline and encourage these types of projects is big. And, and then sharing. So you know, one of the things we're all in this green committee at the chambers for is to share our information and our case studies about projects. So that's one thing I'm trying to do about this project. Andre's done it with her Smart Lights project at her mini storage. Um, so there's, there's a knowledge base that as a community it, we can share and that will uh, lead to you know, progression of more projects like this. That, um, one of the things that is, is able to happen as a result of this project is really raising the bar for future policy setting and future um, decision making in the state. And by creating projects like this, we can show that it really can be done. And we can look to our leadership at the state to raise the bar a bit higher and look for policies and programs that will help lead us in a, in a concrete direction um, towards a healthier environment. And so um, we really applaud this effort and see it as, as a way to, um, to take the next step on the policy front. Um, and when we all go to vote, I know that'll, that'll be, you know, the environment and protecting the environment is going to be on our minds. Um, but we hope that there will be future choices that we can all make that will set the bar even higher. Let's go pull the switch. Make sure you don't get your fingers pushed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Uh, we got a week on